Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna try again and see if we can't firmware update the Hewlett Packard Enterprise DL380 generation 9 that I tried to upgrade last week with an SPP package. It's a collection of firmware packages that Hewlett Packard makes for the different generations of servers. So you will have the generation 9 package, which is the one that we're going to be trying, and it will contain all the firmware for all the generation 9 servers in Hewlett Packard's arsenal. I don't know. I tried to do that last week and I probably made every mistake in the book. But luckily, you guys had a lot of good suggestions in the comments of that video. So I'm gonna try some of them and see if I can improve on that. So uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be able to use every suggestion, uh, but I'm gonna be able to try some of them at least and see uh, where I went wrong. And hopefully I'm gonna be able to see where I went wrong and hopefully we'll get this server firmware upgraded. So first thing that someone said was that this Rufus thing that I uh, used to try and make the USB key, well that wasn't good for this and instead I should use the USB key creating tool that comes with Hewlett Packard Enterprise Service Pack blah blah blah. And um, yeah, I'm gonna try that. And over here I have the service pack, it's, it's down here, it's that file right there. And when you open that in your favorite, I don't know if this is my favorite, but it's seven set. And uh, there's a lot of folders in here. And one of the folders is the one called USB. And if we go down into USB, we see some USB key. And I copied that folder over here. And if we go into it, it has a USB key program here. Now we can start and it wants some improvement and uh, we can make a USB key. I did that and uh, created a USB key. Uh, so uh, we're gonna try that on the server. She has been sitting there for a while. It's a rather big uh, service pack. So um, oh, in here I have a 16 gigabyte USB. You can't see that, focus. That's not gonna do it. Oh, we, we have that, so um, there. Another suggestion wasn't that I should not pick F11 to choose where to boot from. I should just let it boot. So we're gonna boot that. And it's gonna start over here at some point. And someone uh, criticized me for not having the video in focus. When there's this black screen, the camera has all the difficulty in the world focusing on that. So uh, sorry about that. So right now uh, when there is text for it to focus on, there's no problem. Right now it will be out of focus, but no, it didn't. It didn't really get to get out of focus, but yeah, let's see what happens. I'm not gonna press the F11 down there. I'm just gonna try and let it run. I. Um, I didn't do that in the other video, so I have no idea if it makes any difference, but it might because when I press F11 it wants me to boot in legacy mode and that definitely didn't work. This takes a while, but I guess we have time. There, it's doing something. It checks the rate controller. That's normal. We can press again if we want to boot something else. And I was suggested to use the interactive firmware update, but this is already an improvement. We didn't get that far last time using a USB key, so a definite improvement. Oh, and we got the animation. I missed that also in the last video. And it's mounting roots, file system, image, please wait. Uh, I did get that far in the last video, but then it froze. Oh, we get something new. We never got this far. Let's see. Uh, English is definitely my preferred one of the three options. 
do we want to read the the license agreement? I'm gonna assume it doesn't matter what we think about it. Next, firmware update, smart storage. We're gonna do firmware update. Uh, smart storage administrator SSA. Uh, let's go. Please wait while loading some. That's um, adding stuff in Excel, right? Let's see, your connection is not secure. That is mostly weird because I'm not connected to the internet. I haven't connected the switch. So I would have thought that this would be secure. It's usually advanced and add exception. Let's see, host security certificate. Uh, it's not trusted because there's an issue that the certificate has expired. Blah, 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 blah. The current time is this, uh, blah, 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 add exception. Is this just a Firefox thing? It might be. Eh. Inventory of baseline and note, no items found. And it's checking stuff out now. So definitely read the comments in my videos because I get a lot of help in those comments. There was some suggestions to that this uh, SPP was too old and there was a timestamp in the SPP that would make it not work. And so far we're not seeing that. it's done apparently there is 1169 available components in the SPP that sounds about right that's about the number of mistakes per server that Hewlett Packard Enterprise has okay maybe maybe not entirely I think I think they might have a few they had they haven't fixed yet <laughs> uh, let's go next step two review Okay, so we can see all the stuff that we can uh, we can update here. Let's see, this one is forced. We can not select that. All the other ones are. We can select them and deselect them. We can see that the the ILO adapter. We are almost at the newest version. Mm, deploy, and hopefully it's gonna it's gonna do that. Okay, so um, yeah, it's putting that on, I guess. This was the video that I was supposed to do last time. It wasn't supposed to mess up. I had actually made a USB stick where it came up and showed Hewlett Packard Enterprise and I thought, okay, I'm good to go. Uh, my problem is that I, oh, shh, we are filming here. Quiet on set! Thank you. My, uh, my problem is that I only have one of these servers that I can show this uh, upgrade on or update. And uh, if I did the update or if I practiced doing the update, I wouldn't be able to film it afterwards. I think it's just messing with me. That's typical Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Messing with Morton, yeah. Other suggestions that I got was to just put the ISO file on my on and, and start it up with Wintoy, which I do have on my USB key that I carry around. But I started by doing that and the Hewlett Packard server wouldn't even recognize the USB key in there with that on it. Then I made a Rufus USB key instead and that at least showed up with some Hewlett Packard Enterprise graphics and then I thought everything was good to go. That wasn't the case. 
I'm gonna cheat because this little bit is taking way too long and even if I fast forward the video it's gonna get boring so uh, yeah I have jump cut in this video just to I do that in all my videos but yeah I'm not gonna let you wait for that Okay, it seems to uh, deployment done. Uh, there is a lot of green squares, which I assume is a good thing. And view logs. Uh, success reboot is required to activate new version. Uh, I guess the uh, the ILO adapter has successfully upgraded and is good to go. So I think we need to just reboot. I'm gonna let the USB keys sit in. And I'm gonna boot it back and make sure that there is nothing secondary that it wants to install afterwards. So yes, I'm gonna boot it and we're gonna see. Well, if when I do that, it should hopefully come up and say that there is nothing new to install, which would be a good thing. Okay. It. Uh, now it's yellow, but it actually shut down all the way down to uh, not showing anything in the display here. I do wonder how long it takes to reboot or if I have to start it again manually. Hmm, I'll give it a few minutes. Oh dear, I guess I ran out of patience. So we are back here and we have the same 1169 components and right now it's checking out the system to see what firmware levels we have on the hardware inside the server okay none already at baseline version so it already has all the firmware so it did a good job apparently so we're gonna reboot it and then um, yeah we're done reboot yes go away yeah so as said this was the video that I thought that I was gonna be doing last week when I had a USB key, actually the same USB key, that came up with a Hewlett Packard Enterprise logo and I thought everything was good. And if you see that video again, you can kind of hear the disappointment in my voice when we get past that splash screen and it just fails right away because I thought, I was good to go make a video on how to run the SPP and we would be good to go. Today was a lot better and that was because of the help that I got on the comments in the last video. As said, I only had this server so I had to film it so that I would get it the first time because it's really stupid to downgrade the firmware to make a video on upgrading the firmware. So yeah, if you do it the right way, this is very easy. The firmware for it is not that widely available. Hewlett Packard Enterprise is kind of sitting on that and they don't want to give it away. But if you do a little Googling, you might just end up on some site that doesn't care as much about keeping these SPPs to uh, themselves than Hewlett Packard does. Um, so it is possible. The one that we installed here was one that I got last year when they were actually widely available for a little bit. Now they're locked down again. Other enterprise servers are just as difficult uh, firmware updating with these packages. I've done multiple videos on Lenovo servers and updating them with the uh, Lenovo X Clarity uh, administrator, uh, the, uh, what's that? That's called a BOMC, uh, making a, um, also a USB key with, uh, also a USB key with multiple systems on there. It's no easy task either, but with those brands, the firmware is available. They give it to you for free. You don't have to have that expensive subscription and stuff. So uh, IBM, well, IBM has made it so that you have to have a login and they have made a piss poor job of it because you have to register it for a login and then they give themselves 30 minutes to send you an email with the passcode to verify your email and they kind of use most of that time. So I don't have 30 minutes to sit around waiting for an email. Well, even if I'm very busy pressing F5 to update and get new emails. Uh, so yeah, that was a mess. 
but I did actually manage that and as soon as I had created an account I could freely download the firmware and that was for the Model 4 which is actually just beneath here I needed that for work Last I checked Lenovo's stuff was just go ahead and download that was awesome uh, Dell, not so sure, leave it in the comments how is it with Dell's firmware, is it widely available, can you just download that leave it in the comments below Enough rambling, thank you very much for watching my videos, do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.